Thank you very much for this kind introduction. It is my very great honor today to present the very first ESO guideline on mobile stroke unit pre-hospital management. Next slide, please. Next, thank you. Our working group comprised eight members of whom three are actively working with MSUs at the moment. Next slide, please. This active MSU work together with all other disclosures can also be found in the supplementary table one of our guideline publication. Next slide, please. What are mobile stroke units? Well, can they make anything better for our stroke units? That's the overall questions we all have to ask. Well, they are ambulances equipped with a CT scanner, laboratory unit and telemedicine connection to hospital. And they are staffed with stroke specialized teams. This concept was first described in 2003 by Klaus Fassbender, who had his first MSU on the road in 2008. There are multiple publications indicating a benefit coming from MSU care, and I've only listed some of them on this slide. This encouraged ESO and us to analyze the evidence available in a guideline project. Next slide, please. This slide shall just give you an idea of how these ambulances look like before we move on to the guideline details. They all look a bit different depending on where they are located. And this is important because they all have to be integrated into different health systems. They have to adjust to the local system in which they operate. Next slide, slide please. In this guideline project, we follow the ESO standard operating procedure for guidelines and the great methodology. We formulated three PICO questions with three different populations, and you can see them in the small table on the right hand side of the slide. Patients with suspected stroke, those to whom these ambulances get dispatched, patients with acute ischemic stroke and acute intracerebral hemorrhage, we identified 14 outcomes of interest on clinical results. And they were safety, the overall functional result of the patient and patient management. We included randomized controlled trials, RCTs and observational studies. And in case we found overlapping populations reported in the publications data got disentangled. Next slide, please. Our outcomes of interest for the different populations were rated following the Delphi approach. And you can see this on the left-hand side of this slide. We considered safety outcomes as most important for patients with suspected stroke. Clinical outcomes, treatment management aspects and mortality were considered as most important for confirmed stroke patients and for patients with hemorrhagic stroke. We conducted 23 sets of analysis and another three sets for a pre-specified sensitivity analysis in which we included the only two observational studies which assessed the clinical outcome at 90 days in a blind manner that was be proud and best in MSU. Next slide, please. We concluded our results in only one combined recommendation. We decided that this very unconventional way is necessary to reflect the way of operation of an ambulance. Because at the time of dispatch of MSUs, so at the time the intervention is applied, the diagnosis of the patient is still completely unclear. And it would not be feasible to dispatch a MSU to, for example, acute ischemic stroke patients only. This is why we combined it all to one recommendation to reflect real life, more or less. Next slide, please. With our first PICO question, we address the population of suspected stroke patients. They are the whole population to which these ambulances get dispatched. You can see the forest plots for the safety outcome all cause mortality within seven and 90 days on this slide, seven days left hand side and 90 days right hand side of the slide. We could not detect any difference in the mortality between patients treated with MSU compared to conventional pathway. However, quality of evidence for this overall patient population was low and very low. And for 90 days, this outcome came from one non-randomized study only. 
we could not identify enough information to analyze any other outcomes. Next slide, please. Our patient population with confirmed acute ischemic stroke, our second PICO population, and we defined confirmed as hospital confirmed and diagnosis, we found that patients treated with AMSU have a higher odds ratio for an excellent clinical outcome, and this is a modified ranking score between zero and one, and the odds ratio was 1.37 favoring MSU care. Next slide, please. We found similar results for a good clinical outcome, which is modified ranking score between zero and two. The odds ratio here was 1.23. And for any better functional outcome at 90 days, this is the modified ranking shift analysis with an odds ratio of 1.28, <clears throat> sorry. The information for functional outcome analysis came from four respective five non-randomized studies and to better understand the likelihood of these results, we performed an additional sensitivity analysis, and this was pre-specified. Next slide, please. In this sensitivity anal analysis, the studies B Proud and Best MSU only were analyzed. Both studies were large prospective studies with the modified ranking clinical result as primary endpoint, and this primary endpoint was assessed in a blind fashion. Best MSU had alternating MSU and control weeks, which we considered as quasi-randomized. And this analysis confirmed the results for functional outcomes. Patients treated with AMSU had a higher odds ratio of 1.46 to have an excellent clinical outcome. Next slide, please. And odds ratios of 1.33 and 1.39 for a good or any better functional outcome. Next slide, please. The proportion of ischemic stroke patients receiving intravenous thrombolysis IVT was higher in the MSU group with an odds ratio of 2.28 and more thrombolyzed patients received their treatment within the so-called golden hour, the first 60 minutes after symptom onset when probability of full recovery is highest. The odds ratio here was 7.3. MSU treatment was associated with a shorter time between emergency call and start of IVT. The evidence of these, for these results came from one respective three randomized controlled trials and four to six non-randomized studies. Next slide, please. In the subgroup of patients with large vessel occlusion stroke, we could identify a larger proportion of patients primarily transported to thrombectomy centers in the MSU group with an odds ratio of 4.3. However, we could not detect any difference in time to groin puncture or proportion of patients receiving thrombectomy. Next slide, please. There was no signal of any harm caused to acute ischemic stroke patients when treated with AMSU compared to standard care. You can see here the forest plots for the 90-day all-cause mortality on the left-hand side and for symptomatic ICH among those with IVT treatment on the right-hand side. We could not detect any difference in the outcomes of major extracranial bleeding and seven-day mortality, or in the proportion of stroke mimics receiving IVT among all thrombolyzed patients. Next slide, please. Our third PICO question addressed patients with intracerebral hemorrhage. We could identify an increased proportion of patients primarily transported to tertiary care stroke centers in the MSU-treated group. This was with an odds ratio of 6.44. Next slide, please. We could not find any association of MSU care with seven or 90 day all cause mortality. And there was not enough data available to analyze the outcome hematoma expansion. Next slide, please. We did not find enough evidence to analyze clinical outcomes for patients with ICH either. Therefore, we summarized our opinion in an expert consensus statement. 
we believe that the optimized management of ICH patients with direct transport to tertiary care stroke centers is crucial for their further treatment. And four members of our group voted for this statement and two against. Next slide, please. As introduced, we combined all gained results to one overall recommendation for this MSU management pathway, and this is, we suggest MSU care over conventional care, and there are three reasons for this. Firstly, in patients with acute ischemic stroke, we have moderate evidence showing an improved clinical outcome and optimized disease management, resulting in more and earlier thrombolysis with Without any increase of any risk. Next slide, please. Secondly, in patients with ICH, more patients get directly transported to tertiary care stroke centers. And thirdly, for all other patients, we could not detect any signal of harm. Next slide, please. However, we believe that specialist neurological expertise is essential for this care. We summarize this opinion in a second expert statement in this guideline document. This specialist expertise can be provided either by an in-person expert or remote consultation. All members have un unanimously voted for this statement. Next slide, please. To conclude, there are many new things going on in the pre-hospital stroke field. We were able to develop a recommendation with the results available suggesting pre-hospital management of stroke patients, but definitely further research is needed, especially on this patch accuracy, on the question of how beneficial this management is in different geographical areas, for example in rural areas, and how cost-effective it is. Identification of probably novel diagnostic equipment might help to facilitate an implementation and there are already ongoing and new future studies which will lead to further information, especially regarding acute treatments and the cost questions. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention.